What's up everyone? You're probably wondering who the heck am I? My name is Amal and uh, actually I'm the guest speaker on the Miles show. So Miles is right here. I kind of took his spotlight, but who cares? Um, so I'm, I'm here as a guest and, and I'm really thankful. Uh, the topic that we will be discussing is uh, modern relationships and um, what it means to myself, um, what the experiences are like. Oh, before we get into that, I think maybe I should introduce myself, right? I think so. Uh, so my name is Amal. I'm a graduate student in the counseling psychology program here at USIU. I'm also Miles's classmate. This is uh, how we become to become friends. And um, yeah, I think we can get started. What do you think? Yeah. You, can, you haven't told them we're good friends. We're good friends. I'm so sorry. Yeah. Apologize. <laughs> <laughs> sorry to the viewers. All right, thank you so much. That was a wonderful introduction. I mean, I think you're sharing even more than me. Should I just step out and let you <laughs> control the whole show? Yeah? <laughs> Maybe one day. Yeah, for sure, for sure. But thank you for coming. And yeah, you, as you said, uh, we're going to be discussing about modern relationship. And yeah, we can even start off by trying to define what modern relationship, because I'm sure some of our guests are like, what do you mean modern relationship? Like, is it, it like a normal relationship? But like, what do you think is is modern relationship to you right mm. now? Yeah, that's, it's really a good question because in today's age, um, anything can be defined as a modern relationship. This is my, my thought process, my understanding. Um, but before we get to what a modern relationship is, I think we need to take a step back uh, because for it to be modern, it has to be a newer development on something that it has existed before, which would be what they would call the traditional relationship and um, I think that a lot of people are struggling in their relationships because some uh, one partner wants to be traditional while the other one wants to be a modern uh, uh, individual right and that kind of sets the course for conflict in the relationship a lot of challenges um, you know your your values are different the attitudes are different uh, so just taking a step back when you think of a traditional relationship, in, in my opinion, it's one that um, is usually between two people, right? You have the man and the woman. Um, generally, it, the relationship, the, the goal of the relationship is marriage. And so once you are in that marriage, you have some clearly defined roles and responsibilities between the, the two partners. And um, so with that being said, in, in that type of space, the man is t generally the leader. You know, he's the breadwinner of, of the household, of the family. He goes out to work um, and that's really his biggest role is to, to be the provider for the family. And uh, then you have the wife who plays the more submissive role. And, and people are really offended in today's world, especially my generation, the, you know, the younger generation, Gen Z, etc by the word submissive it doesn't mean that you ha you don't have a voice it doesn't mean that you know you're lesser than it just means you're kind of playing the more supportive role to your spouse to your husband and uh, th that's really the foundation of of what the traditional role uh, sorry the traditional relationship is so moving forward now when we're entering this modern relationships the the crazy thing is it doesn't even have to be between two people. It could be between two and more people, three people, four people, a whole community. It doesn't even matter. <laughs> Damn. Right? Like <laughs> people today are not, they don't have to be bound by the, the same thoughts and, uh, you know, the, what governed our parents and our grandparents' um, marriages and their relationships. Young people today are deciding what they want their relationships to look like. If I want 10 partners, if I want two partners, you know, they, they want to be the executives of making their own choices about who they want to spend their time with, whether or not they even want to get married. I mean, that's a whole separate conversation. People, there, there's people who don't want children. And, um, you know, even the definition of like gender roles, like what is a gender role, right? So I think in general, to, to say that we could, uh, fully define what a modern relationship is doesn't make sense to me because it could be anything. There are people that are in relationships with inanimate objects and they're like, they want to get married. Have you heard of this lady who wanted to marry the Eiffel Tower? 
Ah, no. Yeah. But did she? But I've had such I think she, she either did or <laughs> she, she has plans to. But, you know, that, that is something that is completely, like, strange for many people. You but I know of the girl that who married herself and she divorced herself. I mean, I have no words. <laughs> I, I think, you know, I would love to marry myself because I think I'm a pretty awesome person. Mm -hmm. But it, it's not enough, right? Like, it's, I'm, I'm enough for myself, but it's not enough to, to have a whole marriage and relationship. And it's just, I mean, it, it just gets messy over time. But yeah. All right, all right, yeah. So you've talked about both modern relationship and traditional. Mm -hmm. And actually, thank you for bringing up the whole scenario of, you know, traditional. And uh, for me personally, I can say that I feel like I'm more of a traditional type of a relationship for me. Mm -hmm. I don't know about you. Do you prefer being the modern? or the, Because as you said, uh, for the traditional, like the man has, you know, his role is to provide. Like, mm. I like I like that providing. Yeah. I like providing because in a way, it's very satisfying mm. rather. So um, I don't know about you. Do you think that you're a modern? The relationship of a person or a traditional mm. what's your what's your niche, My niche. <laughs> that's a very good question okay well let let me say this you know for women today you know because of like so many of these movements um women are are now able to have jobs and to have the careers that they wanted and that they you know worked so hard to to attain Right. And um, the more women are working in the working force, perhaps finding a relationship gets to, you know, isn't set in the back burner. Right. It's it's kind of like out of sight, out of mind. And then it gets to a, a time where the woman has, you know, the career that she's always wanted. And now the thing that's missing maybe is like she wants to get married. She wants to have a, a partner, a family, etc. And as you know, for women, like our talk, uh, our clock is ticking, especially if you want to have children. So, with that being said, like for me, my mom and my dad both have been very supportive of me getting an education, like many other women in in Kenya, in Somalia, Canada, wherever. So, a lot of our parents are telling their daughters, you know, go and get get an education, right? But it doesn't mean that you you should put aside having a family, having um, a relationship, or you know playing any of those type of traditional roles. So, as much as I am educated and still attaining my education and want to be employed in X, Y, and Z places, deep down, I I would rather also I I don't mind. I don't think I would be like sad if I played a traditional housewife role. I mean, at the end of the day, I don't, I don't know, I don't want to offend any of your viewers, but like if I'm educated and I'm able to teach my, my kid, you know, how to conduct themselves in this world and I can play that educator, primary educator role, why not? And, and as long as I have a husband who is supportive, who's emotionally there and emotionally present, it's not only about being a breadwinner because at the end of the, of the day, like you're you're bringing money home, that's fine. You know, you're you're the the husband. He is um, creating this foundation of financial stability. But there's nothing worse than a partner who just brings in the cash, and you, as a woman, you just feel like you're single in that in the household. You're just alone. You have you you only talk about matters that pertain to either the children or the housing or honey you know this uh, the refrigerator is broken so that's really more of like a technical type of relationship in a marriage i don't want that i want someone who is present who who takes time to listen to me even i could be home all day and um you know doing the household chores and stuff and still ask me how was your day what did you do and I could be so excited about the most minuscule things like, oh, I fixed the air conditioner by myself. And then I want you to be like, how did you do it? Not like, oh, yeah, <laughs> it was easy to do anyway, you know? Yeah. So I think the goal is to, to always have a relationship where there's so much respect for one another. And as parents, like you are, even without having children, because I don't have kids, right? So, um, but 
the partner needs to be emotionally available. And as women too, I think like we kind of um, hold a lot of like resentment sometimes to, to men, especially the breadwinner who's going out like, for example, the husband, the partner, he'd be at work and then, you know, he's like, okay, he'll send a text message and say, um, I'll be home in like two or three hours. I'm just gonna hang out with the boys, right? And women would be like, generally they should be okay with it because it's not an everyday type of occurrence. But a lot of the times, like in, in, the, in, in a situation where there are kids, like the woman has been home with these kids, the kids have been driving her insane. She wants a break too. How dare you go out for two, three hours mm -hmm. after work, you know? Like come and take care of these kids. Because I think kids are a lot of work. Like I'm an aunt and my older sister has two kids just even watching them and they're you know a toddler and uh what do you call someone that's like five five six still a child, toddler or a child. some yeah. child you know <laughs> <laughs> so and they're crazy because they never stop like they just have so much energy and i think those kind of moms really feel um that their partner is not supportive because they're not at home dealing with the the craziness of two or more kids and um but yeah, I think uh, to answer your question, finally, I, I would say I'm more of a traditional, uh, I fall in the traditional type of realm, um, but with a little bit of modern modernity. Yeah, which is okay because <laughs> yeah. I actually even wanted to, you know, to emphasize, like when I say, like personally me being a traditional, doesn't mean that I wouldn't want like a woman to, you know, to try and, you know, get her own bread, you get? Yeah. Like, as you say, traditional with a little bit of more than like if she, if she like you said like for example like you know nowadays everybody's accessing education mm -hmm. you know education like for example in kenya it's free so everyone can attain education so i wouldn't want to be in a position whereby i have like a girlfriend or a wife who's you know who has a degree and i'm limiting her to stay at home mm -hmm. like if she wants to work well and good the better for me like i don't yeah. have to buy her hair i don't have to buy to make her <laughs> nails you know like yeah. some some things she will do it for you know by herself yeah. like i don't mind uh, providing the bigger part but at least you know even hard to feel good like as you say you know you know so yeah like the traditional with a little bit of modernity because like i said the world is quite different mm -hmm. and there's something you've mentioned about uh, submission and it's something i've actually seen it being a very big issue especially in most relationships mm -hmm. like you know when you when you tell a girl like you i want a submissive girl most women think it's all about it's like slavery mm, yeah what's what's all that about like you know like you know being submissive is not like tra you know you're being controlled but you it's all about you know, just doing what, or what do you think submissive is rather for your your point of view i think the definition or the connotation of the, the word submissive has changed over the years because there's you know the, the dominant like you've heard all of this alpha male beta male talk sigma sigma, you know sigma? I, I don't know, you know sigma? I, what's a sigma male i'm a sigma what we, are the rest. We, are, we are bigger than alpha males yeah we are very chilled out but we have this kind of <laughs> check out, check out, check out. I talked about it in my show. I actually okay, talked I'll, about I'll, it. I'll, I'll send you a link. Yeah. But there's also a Sigma male. Very rare men mm -hmm. out there. But yeah, they have had the whole alpha male, alpha female. Not even yeah. as alpha female. But, and it's <laughs> crazy though. Like those are the ones that are like loud and boisterous and everywhere on, on social media, on TikTok and everything. And it's like, I'm an alpha male. And it's like, shut up, you know? Like they, they it's it seems like you're trying to sell yourself and and it's a very weird um kind of like space to navigate because most people don't feel the need to to sell themselves in every single platform and the more um you know that they are saying like it's like saying i'm a man i'm a man and then like who are you trying to convince us or yourself so it just becomes a little bit weird um and, and these words, like, they're just being weaponized in, in all directions. You could say the word submissive without saying the word submissive. Maybe you could be like someone who has traditional values. You know, like, there are, the English language, the, you know, the vocabulary, there's so many words. You, in fact, you don't even have to say it in English. You could use it in any other language that you want. So it just, it sounds cheap. 
and it sounds like a way once you know once you you open that door it kind of leads to disrespect to many women because the the word submissive um, because of the way that it's changed like now then the woman is expected to stay in a relationship when the the partner is cheating on her like oh you're supposed to be submissive like I'm the breadwinner so does that mean you have the right to be disrespectful to go and have multiple affairs to go have different baby mamas and children while you're still in this relationship like I feel like it's used as a way to control the the, the amount of like capacity a woman should have in the relationship or how much power she has and so yeah well, what was your question <laughs> <laughs> i was asking about the submissive yeah but, but i think you you know you've clarified some few things like you know they were telling me about you know when the relationship is going rock bottom and then like you know a woman's not just supposed to be you know there for it but for me i think submissive it's all about respect you know like respect of you know a man has been left because you know, he has lost his job you know yeah, the lady takes the kids and goes yeah. back home you know so such things they were there mm -hmm. so at least that's something that has been seen so yeah mm -hmm. you you've talked uh, much about it and then like i can ask you also do modern relationships really last long compared to like <laughs> the traditional ones like when our parents are dating rather even our great grandfathers or our grandfathers mm. are dating even they are together like most parents are together mm -hmm. like yeah. divorce divorce is not so high in the long time uh, uh, in the 10 years ago compared to right now like right now divorce is actually like uh, you know uh, uh, it's like 50 percent yeah and it's, it's like a hot business actually mm. it it's is a, it's a hot business the thing is right marriage now. is a business in itself Damn. so to get into a marriage like yeah. you're already signing a contract and that's a business type of relationship <laughs> like i don't think I don't know, marriages are not just about love and all that stuff, because eventually that spark dies. So it's the, the long-term relationships are really built on like commitment, which is different than just like love and feelings. Have you not seen, have you seen people getting a divorce? Like any of those um, those talk shows that, that that have like the divorce uh, divorce court? Yeah. You never have thought these people loved each other, right? So yeah. I really don't think that uh, when people are entering marriages, like it's not just don't think about love only. Think about the values of this person. How how c can you see them like 10, 50, 30 years? You've heard of all of these um, X of uh, that people have. Mm. Th this term that people are using, like oh, you know, he gave me the ick, and it's just a new way of saying like oh, you know, like yeah. it's just gross, and. To, to be honest, when we think of, when I think of if modern relationships are in fact lasting um, c compared to traditional relationships, traditional relationships I feel last longer, but we also have to think about like this element of happiness. When people are given the choice of what kind of relationship that they want, want to enter and um, you know, how they want to live their lives. People who are in these modern relationships, these polyamorous relationships, I mean, I don't know if it's true or not, but they would say, yeah, we're happy in this type of way. There are stories of um, traditional married couples who have been together for some years and then said, okay, we need to change something. Like the relationship is becoming dry, right? Like it's becoming boring. We need something new. And then, you know, they'd go on a site, I don't know what site, but, you know, they'll find stories about other people that have uh, invited someone into their marriage and then have like this three-way relationship. And they're like, yeah, if we had done this like 10 years ago, we would be so happy. I mean, there's no way of really quantifying how happy that they would be. But given the choice of what kind of relationship these people want, then I think, you have to consider the happiness factor um, in traditional relationships like i'll give you an example my parents have been together since my whole life uh, and even shortly before i was born and in my culture it's very common to have 
either divorced many wives from the man's perspective and or to have more than one wife right so it's quite common and uh, my uncles all I, I think all of both my aunts and uncles have been in more than one marriage and my dad is the only one who's been married to the same lady uh, and has one set of kids if that makes sense yeah. like yeah so it's quite rare to see this, especially at someone like my dad's age, where all of his um, age mates are onto their fifth, sixth marriage and fourth, fifteenth family. So I, I really respect him for that, uh, especially given the chance that if he if he did want to have a second wife, like he's more than financially capable of doing so, but he's decided not to, and to just be a one wife and one family man. Um, which is great so um, but you know of course no marriage is perfect and my parents have had conflicts where my mom would call me oh your dad oh, he's done this and then my dad would be like what did your mother tell you oh she's she, she's not no she, she must be crazy or something um, and so just having to play this mediator, mediator role between the two it's uh, you know sometimes I am like anyway it doesn't matter what I say because you guys will figure it out as mom and dad like you should never let your children um, infiltrate the marriage of parents right so I think they just wanted to vent and uh, which is totally okay but um, there was a time that my mom's mom my grandmother was staying with us and you know things I think the conversation got a little bit heated between mom and dad and uh, my grandmother was like shh to my mom right like Shh, don't say ah, you don't say anything don't talk back to your husband don't say anything so and I know very well from um, my, my great my grandfather was quite abusive to my grandmother and he was abusive to his kids like my mom and and all of uh, her siblings so she aka my grandmother is very used to she's the what you would call this submissive pretty much voiceless type of woman and just taking and, and uh, enduring all of this type of like psychological abuse, emotional abuse, all of that, all for him to just divorce her some years later with nothing, right? And uh, it's just, yeah. So to be honest, like there's, there's good and bad in both of this modern relationship and traditional relationship. Um, and every relationship is different from one another. So if you're in an abusive relationship, the best thing, whether it's modern and whether it's traditional, I, it, it doesn't really matter. Um, the, what matters is the safety of people um, and, and being able to get the support that you need to get out of these type of relationships. Uh, and to be honest, yeah, like who cares if you're dating someone for six months or in, in a marriage for 15 years, if at the core of it, you're scared of your, your husband, you're scared of your wife because they are emotionally and physically abusive. Yeah, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, I like, I like how you've emphasized on the terms of, especially if it's abusive. That's quite important because so many times people don't see the, the red flags mm -hmm. as early as possible. So it's quite important, you know, even for you know, both men and women to feel safe, you know. Like recently in this year, I've seen so much, uh, even I was, I, I don't want to say surprise it's been there, but you have seen it even on, on the whole social media, you know, prominent men like, you know, actors and, you know, rich guys, they have gone through abusive relationship and they've been quiet. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's been a long time, you see. And they've been in that situation for a long time. It's only that people don't see it. Mm -hmm. And rather, if people see it, they make fun of it. Like I've seen so many memes of, I don't want to talk about, you know, those gentlemen out there who have gone through this, but you've seen memes about them crying, mm -hmm. you know, when, because they're in an abusive relationship. And it's, it's quite important that, you know, people to be safe when it comes to a relationship, yeah? We've talked about, you know, uh, relationship don't last, yeah? Modern relationship don't last. But, you know, we have to also talk about how hard it is. It's very hard to date. You know, not, I, I don't know about... Uh, you know, for other people, but I'm just saying in terms of the statistics that are there that I've seen, personal, but it's quite hard to date in the modern relationship. Mm -hmm. And for you, what do you think are the, you know, causes for making the modern relationship to be hard? Okay, so um, why they're hard? 
okay, these are my thoughts. I feel that a lot of people are, nobody's really in a committed relationship anymore. Um, and I say that because the, the amount of like options that people have, and by options, I don't mean options of like longevity of a relationship. I mean something quick, something like right now, oh, you know, the sneaky links and whatnot. Like there's just so many um, ways for people to, to be, um, what's the word? To like cheat, you know, or to, to be, to do whatever it is. Like you have social media, which in itself I think is such uh, a positive in the world, but it has the equal and maybe even more greater uh, negative impact on people's self-esteem, on people's views of what relationships look like, um, and, and the portrayal of their relationships. Like people want to say, oh, I'm in the best relationship ever, da 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 da. And then meanwhile, it's just like, mm, I don't, I wouldn't even want to be part of that type of relationship. So condescending, you know, people are uh, maybe even talking about like um, liking so many other bodies on, on social media. And uh, there's, there's just so many more ways that people can hide their infidelity. Uh, back in the day, you know, people didn't even really date that much. This concept of dating for months on months and years and years of like eventually leading to some kind of a marriage or whatever the goal is. Many people today don't even care about getting married. Like it, people are so afraid of getting married that they'd rather be in a relationship that's, you know, where they, they're fully committed to one another. And like, why, why have that piece of paper? And um, I think it's, it's really hard because everything is happening at the same time everything is trending at the same time um, today being in a good supportive relationship is trending tomorrow toxic relationships are you know what's in crazy women crazy men stalking your neighbors this and that like it's it's wild i think like people are just losing their mind <laughs> in every direction possible and being in a relationship is also uh, could be beneficial to yourself or it could be like completely detrimental um, I'd rather be single and like happy than to be desperate to be in a relationship for the sake of being in a relationship and I think a lot of people they just are lonely um, maybe they they feel like they've been uh, single for far too long so they go and they en enter the dating scene and then they see okay yeah this one just wants to do this this one isn't interested in me you know people have so many preferences now um, and even having preferences not to say that it's a bad thing but it's a way to like you know maybe discriminate people if uh, if I mean you don't have to date certain groups of people but like it's it's really what you like right but people are taking it too far they're like oh i'd never date a black girl because they're all crazy or they're all this and it's like not all of us are mm -hmm. <laughs> some of us maybe right and uh but then you have all of those dating apps which i think are just absolutely trash like the things that I've, I've been on tinder when i first came in it was i was like mm -mm, mm -mm, no this ain't it and what people are looking for because i think even on on uh, dating apps like people feel bold enough to share exactly what they're looking for and and here i am just thinking like what kind of a world is this but yeah i'm not even going to get into <laughs> to the things that i've seen <laughs> Yeah, but you know, actually, in these dating apps, it's not actually dating, though. No, it's, it's not. It's, it's just hookup culture. Yeah, it's a hookup yeah. culture. So, yeah. And it's sick. Like, okay, I think. I, I, okay, these are just my thoughts. This yeah. hookup culture is just—it's so dangerous um, for a lot of people, both men and women. You never know what you're gonna get into. Like, there's people who actively say, "I don't want to know you. I just want to like boom, yeah. boom, boom, boom." You know. And then it's like, you don't know what kind of, like what their sexual history is. You don't know what's um, even like, if you've seen uh, you've seen that Jeffrey Dahmer on yeah, Netflix. Yeah, I've seen it, i <laughs> You know, that's the kind of world we're living in. And uh, it's just super dangerous for, not only for women, like for men too. So like, there's people that, let's say, you know, you dress nice and you look like you have some money, 
they'll invite you to go for a drink and then ro rob you, have like a gang of guys there to take what, all the things that you have. And yeah, so it's just, it's really dangerous. Like what happened to organically meeting someone at the bookshop, you know, or um, at a park? Like today, if anyone approached me, I'd be so afraid. I'd, I would say, don't, don't talk to me. And in fact, that was one, one, one time um, I was in one of these shops, like I was at the mall and uh, I was, you know, just doing my grocery shopping. And this guy came up to me and he kind of like, I had my headphones in, right? So he mumbled something and I uh, just gave him like this death stare. I was like, excuse me? And then he kind of mumbled it again. And I was like, okay, that's weird. And then uh, he mumbled something again. So I was like, what, right? So aggressive. And I really didn't mean it. Like, cause I had my headphones and my music was blasting in my ear, etc. So I was just like, I was annoyed that someone was, you know, trying to talk to me. And m mind you, he was actually a very like attractive looking guy. And then the guy's like, oh, sorry. And then he kind of like left. It took me a while to realize like this guy was maybe he wanted to meet me in this organic way that I just mentioned and I just shut it down completely. So yeah, I think it's um, it's just very challenging. Like nobody, nobody wants to be a sucker, you know, for like love. Nobody wants to be in um, to be the person that shows like that they care about the other person to be like uh, to, to want to care for them. You could there's people that are, you know, talking to each other in that talking phase and then you don't text me for like a day. There's so many rules. Oh my goodness. There's like one of the rules is if I, you know, these are unsaid rules, right? If I if I sent you the, your, the good night text, like it's on you to text me tomorrow morning. And if you don't, like this is over. It's done. I'm never speaking to you. Block, delete, whatever, right? So people are just triggered so quickly today that you don't even have to do anything for someone to just walk away from that relationship. And people's uh, boundaries are kind of like being set in stone. You, they know what they will take from a partner, what they will accept, what they're willing to you know, set aside and let go. And uh, the standards, like, it's okay to have standards. I think by all means, everyone should have um, you know, good standards and high standards, but standards that are attainable for people, right? And, um, and some people just aren't able to meet those, those types of standards. Uh, but the bigger issues, like you have to be able to meet the needs of people, like the emotional needs, the, the financial and the physical needs. Like there's the whole, um, the love language, right? Like what's your love language? Do you know what your love language is?